So we've been talking about the harmonic oscillator off and on throughout the semester. Um, but so far, we've only modeled harmonic oscillators subject to a restoring spring, spring force um, and a damping force. But today, we're going to start studying harmonic oscillators subject to external forces, like if you're shaking the table or pushing the mass with your hand. Um, so remember, we started with Newton's second law, mass times acceleration equals force. Um, and some assumptions about how the forces work, that the force of the spring is proportional to the displacement, right? The further away from center you pull it, the harder the spring pulls it back. Um, and the damping force is proportional to the speed of the mass, because if damping is typically friction, so like the faster it's moving, the more friction there is. So we came up with this equation based on those assumptions that um, my double prime is proportional, uh, is equal to, um, negative ky minus by prime. This is proportional to displacement, proportional to velocity. So to, an inclu to include an external force, we just add another term to the right-hand side. And we're going to assume this external force is a function of time. So we're going to call it f of t. Some common forcing functions would be a constant function, exponential growth and decay function, so that the force being applied either grows over time or decreases over time, or sinusoidal functions, which are very common. Um, they might model, you might use a sinusoidal forcing function to model like um, an earthquake um, or sound waves against glass. So our new equation, we just add the forcing function to the right-hand side and add another force. This is mass times acceleration equals this whole side is all the forces. So then we just do some some cleaning up, right? Divide everything by m, and then these constants, b over m, k over m, and f of t over m, we just like call them new things so that we don't have fractions. So we have y double prime plus py prime plus qy equals g of t. So this is a second order because there's two derivatives, linear in terms of y, right? Why g of t might be nonlinear in terms of t, but the equation is linear in y. Constant coefficient, p and q and the one there are constants non-homogeneous because of the g of t instead of a, a zero, non-autonomous because there are t's in it, not just y's. Um, and we, for, we refer to this equation as a forced harmonic oscillator or a forced equation, and g of t is the forcing function. If you just drop the g of t and replace it with a zero, that's the corresponding homogeneous or unforced equation. And you solve the forced harmonic oscillator exactly the way we solved um, non-homogeneous equations that were first order. Okay. You use uh, lucky guess. So find the general solution to the associated homogeneous equation. So just drop the g of t and solve. We just spent uh, a class doing that. Right? Um, then find a particular solution to the non-homogeneous equation using lucky guess. The guess will have the form g of t plus its derivatives, just like it did with the first order. And then the general solution um, is the sum of your homogeneous solution and your particular solution. So some comments. Um, the solutions to the harmonic oscillator with damping, so if there is a, a friction force and there's no external force, um, they will always tend to zero. The homogeneous equation solutions will always go to zero because the damping force makes everything die out. The motion of the harmonic oscillator eventually stops. So then the linearity principle, the way we solve this, it's, it's y homogeneous plus y particular, but y homogeneous goes to zero. So over time, y general tends to y particular. We call that um, the forced response. y particular is the forced response or the steady state response. Why homogeneous is the natural response of the system without any forcing. So this is kind of what it looks like. So um, if you have a forced, damped harmonic oscillator, um, eventually it all settles down to the forced response. So let's just do one together, and then you can practice um, doing some on your own. So it's, the process is very similar to things we've done before. So step one, solve the associated homogeneous equation. So 
I want to solve 2y double prime minus 4y prime minus 6y equals 0. We just drop the forcing function. And then we just discovered that we can just quickly write down the um, characteristic equation. This is going to be 2s squared minus 4s minus 6 equals 0. Um, I'm just going to divide everything by 2 here. So I have s squared minus 2s minus 3 equals 0. And then that factors to s minus 3, s plus 1. So I have two eigenvalues, 3 and negative 1. So that means I have two y's of the form e to the st, right? y1 is e to the 3t, y2 is e to the negative t. Take a linear combination of those two particular solutions, and you have y homogeneous. So y homogeneous is going to be k1 e to the 3t plus k2 e to the negative t. All right, so that's just solving the homogeneous. Next, I have to find a y particular to the non-homogeneous or the forced equation. All right, so step two is to find a particular solution to the forced equation. So I'm just going to write that down. 2y double prime minus 4y prime minus 6y equals 3e to the 2t. That was the original given differential equation. I need a y particular. I need one thing that might solve this. So your guess for y particular is going to take the form of your forcing function and its derivatives, right? But what's the derivative of e to the stuff? It's e to the stuff, so something times e to the stuff. So um, I'm just going to have alpha e to the 2t. Now, typically, I would also put plus beta and then the derivative of e to the 2t, right? But those are like terms. So I can just combine them into one alpha e to the 2t. So I'm not even going to write that in this case. But if your, func if your forcing function and its derivative aren't like terms, put them both down, which you'll do in the first activity. All right, so if that's y particular, then y particular prime, just take the derivative of that, would be 2 alpha e to the 2t. And y particular double prime would be 4 alpha e to the 2t. Then you take your guess for y particular, y particular prime, y particular double prime, and put them all into this equation and figure out what alpha has to be to make this guess uh, a real solution. All right, so I have 2 times y double prime minus 4 times y prime minus 6 times y. And I have to make that equal 3e to the 2t. All right, so this is 8 alpha e to the 2t minus 8 alpha e to the 2t. Those terms just go away. So I have negative 6 alpha e to the 2t equals 3e to the 2t, which means negative 6 alpha has to equal 3. And then I can solve for alpha, and I get negative 1 half. So now I know my y particular, right? I guessed that y particular would look like alpha e to the 2t. Now I know what alpha is, so I have a y particular. It is negative 1 half e to the 2t. Yep, now just add them together to get your y general. y homogeneous plus y particular. So that's k1 
e to the 3t plus k2 e to the negative t minus 1 half e to the 2t. All right, so before I have you start on your activities, um, I'm going to give you a hint on the first one. Oh, I already wrote it. Never mind. Um, it has to do with, look at the forcing function here, 2t, right? So your y particular is going to be the form, that's a linear function, right? So it's going to have that form, like alpha t. But then what's the derivative of 2t? Two, or a constant, right? The derivative of alpha t is alpha, so I'll just throw a constant on there. Like, the, this is the form of the forcing function itself, and then that's its derivative. They combined into a single term, yeah. Yep. 